Welcome to the Reticle Up Podcast, where I, Three Gun Kenzie, will be interviewing competitive shooters, hunters, fishermen, archers, entrepreneurs, and outdoorsmen. Come learn with me as I interview people from all walks of life, in different disciplines, all across the world, from novices to professionals of all ages. No matter what, everyone has something they can teach you. So come join me on the journey. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I've got my friend Austin Cox here. So he is a disabled competitive shooter, and I met him at the Tennessee IDPA Championship recently, which is really cool to watch him shoot. Um, He's also an indoor uh, range firearms instructor and trainer. So really cool to be sitting down with you, Austin. I'm excited that you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I know I'm a very high energy. Um, Got to ask a question like, what did you think of me when you first met me on the range? No, yeah, it was it was early, and you were definitely already wide awake. So, <laughs> definitely brought the energy to the first few matches, which it was kind of chilly that morning. I mean, I think it was like thirty when we got there, so yep. it was it was helpful. It was definitely <laughs> helpful. But you think of the pickles. <laughs> that was that was just an interesting coincidence. <laughs> I mean, of all, what three of us in the group had it, and then you had your shirt, which was which is awesome. So, yep, no, it was, was fun. <laughs> That was my favorite photo. So yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody knew we had the socks because we were all wearing pants. So we had the right. socks and pickle jersey. We all were meant to squat up together. Right. No, yeah. We're meant to be. It's awesome. So. It's awesome. So um, yeah, I don't know if you want to start off just kind of sharing your story uh, for people listening, you know, what you went through and how you've kind of overcome the disability now and you're shooting and teaching and still gaming, which I want to talk about that career too. But I don't know if you want to share what happens. Um, sure. Uh, so about, it's about four and a half years now ago, I was, um, in a fire. I was burned about 65% of my body with third degree burns. I spent total about six months in the Bur- in Vanderbilt's hospital in Nashville. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, about 21 surgeries since then, uh, lost most of my left hand, um, and a little bit of my right hand. And then I'm most of my body and stuff. Um, so I'm in and out of the hospital still, uh, here and there I've spread it out a lot more. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I randomly just decided that I needed more physical therapy for, from my burns. And so I just randomly looked up what was going on training wise around Nashville and randomly saw IDPA and was like, well, I'll just go look at it and just went to, into the club match and just never stopped going after that. So awesome. it's been a, yeah. So you, bree- you breezed over your story way too fast, first of all. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> You're good. I mean, for, for people listening, um, it's pretty incredible, like, what you overcame. So, like, that's a lot of surgeries. I know you're still, like, like you said, doing physical therapy and have to live yeah. every day with that. Were you always so positive about it? Because I didn't hear you complain at all. Like, I, I would have had no idea, honestly. Like, I didn't, it didn't even register to me that, like, part of your hand was missing, honestly, until, like, the fifth stage, which is really sad. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I guess so. Um, I just never really processed it as bad as it was through the whole thing. And so I was just kind of doing the next thing that I was supposed to do and just kind of hanging out, I guess. Yeah. And so that that was kind of my, my mindset was just what was the next thing. And I wasn't really looking further much past it. Yeah. And so uh, I guess, yeah, it was just, it just worked out. I mean, I'm, I, I just naturally kind of make jokes about stuff so yeah it just kind of just kind of works out so gotta laugh at yourself for sure um yeah yeah I mean that was total accident too like yeah walking's dangerous who knew yeah right yeah so wow so and then you know I got to meet which was really cool um your dad came out your wife came out your whole family is super supportive of you oh yeah I'm sure that's helped through everything as well no, yeah, it, it was a big part of it. I mean, I rarely had half a day in the hospital where there wasn't somebody there um, through mo- through most of it, at least, especially early on. Mm-hmm. So I definitely had a lot more support than most anybody else did. So that probably definitely was part of it. Um, it was definitely harder on them than it was on me, only because they were probably getting more of a reality than I was. I was just kind of lost half the time. So um it, it, yeah, it, it was it was it was a big deal having them there all the time. Yeah. So, 
So it really worked out. My, my wife could work work at the, at the hospital and took my mom. So it, it worked out really well. So That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, the other stuff too, with like recovery time, like you said, you're kind of never recovering. So like physical therapy for you, I don't know what that looks like. So shooting is a part of it, but are you also like having, I don't, I don't even know what that looks like for you. Do you want to share like how you've been doing that? Uh, so, so I don't really have like a formal physical therapy at this point. I mean, being four, four and a half years out, mm-hmm. I mean, there's some minor uh, physical therapy that I do like after each surgery specific to whatever, what graft we did or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever we did during that surgery. Um, but it's really just staying moving and kind of constantly trying to do more. Um, but at this point, yeah, like, like I said, there's nothing really formal about it. It's just, it's just being active and trying to be as active as you can be. It's, it's, it's more time, letting time work. And then the surgery is kind of key up with that. Yeah. And kind of, I, I can, I can stop the surgeries whenever I feel like it. Um, but we're still technically not out of the construction versus cosmetic stage, I guess is what they would sure. reconstruction versus cosmetic. So I'm technically still in the reconstruction phase. Okay. Um, but I can technically stop right now and I live a, f- probably a perfectly fine life. Yeah. Um, but we're still doing stuff to kind of make things better. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Love the dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good. So, okay. IDPA. Um, so yeah. you went out and was like, I'm going to try shooting. Walk me through, just from your perspective, like what you learned in that first match, even just from a competitive standpoint, and then also like what you needed the tools wise just for your disability. Um, it, it, it was one of those things that I, I really broke it down to not try not to worry about the buzzer at all. Mm-hmm. And I spent, especially the, I think I spent the first three or four months just getting all eight zone hits. That's all I wanted. Yeah. And so, and so I, I had to just kind of mentally break it down like that. Um, and then my gear, I got lucky that I found somebody, a uh, firefighter in Texas that actually custom made my glove for me. So it fit my left hand. Um, and, and so I, I kind of made small modifications like that. Like I put towel and grip around the, my base plates okay. just to give them a little more grip. Um, and then it's kind of just the spacing of where they're at. I had to kind of, that, that took over time. It wasn't the first match I got that figured out. Um, so it's been, been a lot of, been a lot of playing around with small stuff on it. Um, but it really hasn't been a lot of modifications that I've had to do. Okay. Um, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, the biggest ones would, would probably be, you know, placements of stuff mm-hmm. and where they can be, which I break all the rules technically <laughs> um, because I can't keep it, you know, you know back past 20 and everything right. or, or 90. So it's, it is what it is, but yeah. I've, it, over time I've gotten it kind of figured out pretty well with where we're, where I want to place that. So, yeah. So, and the, and the difference between you, you know, I had, um, uh, adaptive shooter from team Glock on the podcast before, and he's in chair. So like visible disability, I guess, for people to see for you. And I watched you, I guess, I don't know, by the sixth stage, I didn't even realize what was happening is that you had to explain to every RO what was going on or why you had to do the things that you had to do. And we right. talk about this offline and I think there's value to it. So, you know, this podcast could change the future, but you know, what did you think about like having that like disability category or, or some sort of adaptive shooter category just to help the ROs not ask the same question on every single stage. I mean, I, I think there's merit to it. I mean, even just because it gives them a quick reference just to, Oh, there's something that we're going to have to address, but whatever, whatever it is, yeah. big or small. And just so it's at least on their radar a little bit. Cause like you said, I, I, I I'd either get stopped or I got, I got told at, at one at the end of one of my runs that I have to do a reshoot. And then we got fixed and everything. And like, I got like, like, you're right. I had multiple issues mm-hmm. with different people saying stuff and different are saying things. Luckily I ha- we had half my club or half the, half the team was from my club. So mm-hmm. that they, they could kind of fix it without me having to be involved. So right. that, that, that was helpful, but, but no, it's, it, it would definitely, I feel like it's a small thing that they could, they, they could, they could adjust that just makes things go a little smoother. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, so. I, I like that category. You know, if you think about it, even with like steel challenge and other smaller matches, um, 
and, and even bigger matches, but they have like kid divisions or they have 22s for them to shoot or they just know. Yeah. So like yours is not as visual or like other people's might not be as visual either. So I think that right. that's kind of neat. Now on the other part to it, and I know you really can't compare like being a chair versus with you, like having the burns and stuff, but having that division, like you said, might be helpful too. And just in terms of like who's shooting, who's out there, can you compare yourself ish to each other? Maybe. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a hard thing to compare. Um, so it's, I've, I've thought about that, that side of it too. And it's like, yeah, it'd be cool to see that just to see it. Um, but, but, but how good of a reference it would be. I'm not, not really sure. It would be interesting yeah. to see it just, just to see how it is, but. Yeah. So when you were diving into, did you spend any time like on Google or searching any like Facebook groups or any connections just to see if you could relate to anybody else doing what you're doing? Um, I mean, I, I, I briefly looked into it and there really wasn't anything for, for disabled shooters. There's some European stuff, Mm -hmm. mostly trap shooting stuff. Um, so I didn't really ever find anything that was really shooting related. Yeah. Uh, so never really happened with that. Um, that, that, that I've seen at least out there. Um, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't dive too hard into looking. Um, I'm, so. curious, I'm curious if that's out there. I know Bubba, um, I watched him. He has no arms. I think he was born that way. Don't quote me on that, but it was really neat. He actually shoots with his feet. So he draws from a holster in a shoe shoots, uses his, his big toe as a trigger finger. Um, right. It was really neat to see that. And so like, there's more people than we, we are uh, like aware of. And I think each one that gets into the sport though, helps others to see like, Hey, I can do that too. Right. It's a possibility. Yeah. Definitely. No, I agree. So I would love to see more of that. Um, for sure. Um, I'm curious too, like for the, uh, working side of the range, what made you want to go teach? I, I ended up in a, in an introductory class on accident. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I, I signed up for a class just as regular class, thinking that you was just just a standard class. Ended up being an instructor class with mostly law enforcement stuff in it, and I was I was shooting as well as they were, and I was doing all the stuff they were doing. And I was like, well, if they've been doing this for twenty years or whatever, it's like, and, and I'm right here with them. I mean, that this could be something. I mean, I, I enjoy being here. I enjoy doing this. It's something I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, at least in, you know, for the most part and for, for most things. Mm-hmm. And so it was just kind of just naturally evolved from there was, was once I had the kind of confidence gain, gain from being around it and seeing what it was, I just kind of jumped into it as hard as I could, I guess. That's so, so. neat. So accidentally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> accidentally in class, uh, how many people have you like met and talked to and, and taught at this range? Um, I mean, tons. Uh, we 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 pretty steadily have about, I'd say, seven to ten people in each class, min- like minimum, give or take. Mm-hmm. It's about our average class um, in our pistol classes, at least. Um, so no, we, we and lots of repeat people. Yeah. We have people that, that they'll they'll burn through they'll they'll go through all all the series. And then come back through and do them again, and they're just perfecting what they what they want to learn, and it's it's been really fun to see them go through it and do all that. Uh, they've really evolved through it, and we've been able to kind of specialize stuff for them on the side with the group. So it's been it's been cool to work with them through it. So that's really cool. I yeah. like I like that. It's almost like a giving back to teach. Like I mean, because it's you don't make much, right? And it's not very cost effective um but it is a way to like just make an impact i think on the second amendment rights you know no yeah, no it's 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 pure fun mostly for me i mean it I, I don't make anything from doing it pretty much so it's pretty much all volunteer work for me yeah uh but but new shooter classes are my favorite mm-hmm. um and I, i've just it's just a lot of fun for me and, and it keeps me up and going and moving so yeah so it's, 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 it's good for me. And so, and I enjoy it a lot. So that's awesome. Are they always, yeah. are they ever shocked when you like are showing them shoot and they're like, wait, like you don't have <laughs> part of a hand, right? Um, I, I don't have a lot of people freeze up, at least the most people hide it pretty well. Right. Um, every once in a while people get caught off guard a little bit more than that, than not. And yeah. they, they kind of freeze up. Um, but not, not, not as much as you would think. Yeah. Um, but I'm also pretty open about it. 
and, yeah. and, and, and do stuff with it goofy yeah. while, while, I'm, while I'm doing stuff. So, so it's, it's kind of obvious pretty fast most right. of the time. It took me five stages. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Austin. I was like, oh, <laughs> five stages, which is so cool though. Like you said, like you can still compete kind of at the level of shooting. Um, yeah. Things are a little bit slower or different, but I was like, heck yeah. Like, yeah, but to be fair, I was wearing like long sleeves, like yeah. glove and everything. So I was, I was pretty covered up. So still, I mean, that's, that's neat. Like, yeah, you're very inspirational to me, I think. And I have to remember to check myself of like, why am I complaining about that? Right. When there's real problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's important. Uh, right. Was, uh, was firearms always part of your life growing up? Um, so I grew up on hunting and fishing with my cousins and stuff. My my actual house, you know, family, then none of them really did anything with guns or outdoors or anything like that. So I really had to go outside the house for that. Okay. Um, so so I grew up doing stuff with it, but it wasn't a super like front of front like front thing for us. Um, but we we were wrestlers. Uh, that's what we did. We, we were wrestling camp all through the summer. We were wrestling in the winter. We, we were back in camp. Really? As soon as as soon as the wrestling was done, oh yeah, what? Yeah, you know, traveling for nationals, doing all that stuff. Um, so growing up, it was it was mostly focusing on that, and you couldn't do much because you might get hurt for wrestling season. And so we, we were pretty much not allowed to do much. Um, but any chance I got, I, I would be hunting and fishing with my cousins and stuff. Um, and then once I graduated high school, I I got back into deer hunting, got my first rifle. Uh, and really stuck to, to hunting stuff. Um, I didn't I didn't, didn't get my, my carry permit when I turned twenty one. Uh, I, I didn't really do get much besides you know bolt actions for deer hunting, okay. uh, and shotguns for for dove or or turkey or whatever it was. Um, until after my burns, um, and then and like I said, I I got my carry permit and we were trying to figure out ways for me to get more active. Uh, and I'd already taken a class or two. Uh, for my for, for carrying just in general mm-hmm. and was like well I'll just go look at this and showed up and they're like well why didn't you bring your gear <laughs> I was like I didn't I didn't know what what I needed to bring they're like you should have brought your gun we would have figured the rest out right and so they, they they were all super supportive and wanted to help me out and mm-hmm. would do whatever they could to help and kind of kind of pointed me in the right direction so I got I got, I got my gear figured out pretty quick, which was helpful because it, 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 I just said the club club I'm, I'm with, it's just, they're a really good group of people and, mm. it, and they're just always there to kind of help out and they love helping new people. So it's, it, it was, it was, it was just a good timing for it all. So yeah. Besides so, ammo prices at least. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. The, that IDPA match though, for real was one of my favorite squads I've ever had. And it was one of the worst matches I've ever shot. And it was one of the hardest mm-hmm. matches I've ever shot because I did not understand IDPA at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's simpler than USPSA, but it's, it's just more finicky with the specifics of it at yes. the same time. It makes so. you think harder and like in the moment. And then if you mess up, you're like, now what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that match though. So... That, didn't you win something with the match? Yeah, I, I, I won carry optics and novice. So, so proud of you. That was so exciting. I know we're talking about that offline, but we both won our divisions. That's a big deal. Yeah, no, no, it was, it was, it was really fun. It was really cool. Uh, it, it, it sucks that that we kind of that the computers messed it up, and so it, they, they thought that I had I hadn't uh, at, the, at first, and had to go talk to him and get it all figured out. But it all worked out. And I got the, the, they had to mail it to me and everything, but it's so cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Missed the highlight moment, but you, you did earn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it was, you know, it was a fun day and the, the weather was, weather was nice. Weather never got too hot or anything. So yeah. Yeah. No, the whole day was good. So, and, um, you got to see the rivalry between me and my brother Ryan there. What oh yeah. Think, what do you think of that? <laughs> y'all, y'all were fun. No, we had, we had a great time. And I, and, and it, <laughs> I just want to shoot that squad again. I have to say, like that was so much fun. <laughs> I, I'm I'm, sh- I'm sure we'll, we'll all be there again next year. So let's do it. Squad up <laughs> next year in 2023. Whoever's listening, you're on the squad again. <laughs> awesome. Now, how do we get Allie into shooting? 
she shoots. I mean, she's got more. She's got more guns than I do. It's just, Aww. at least, I mean, she's got more pistols than I do. But she just, just won't come to IDPA. I don't know. No, we'll I mean, take she's, that. She's got holsters. She's got everything she needs. So, hmm. so maybe she just needs like a friendly push. Well, probably. Okay. Okay. I think by next year we could have her, or I could introduce her to the PCC dark side. <laughs> I hate so much here. No. <laughs> I know. Oh, sorry. We've digressed a little bit. Um, okay. So you've lived so many different lives. I have to go back to the deer hunting. So did you grow up in Nashville? Well, technically Franklin, which is yeah. about 20 miles south of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like nice and rural ish, but still close enough to the city. Um, yeah, it, was, yeah, it was at least so. Yeah. What was that first rifle? Uh, Savage 308. Ooh, okay, that's a big gun. Okay. Who taught you that? I didn't get a lot of teaching with it. It was like growing up, it was just like here's a here's a shotgun with a slug in it, like go sit over there. <laughs> like go like figure it out, like, like they'll move <laughs> kind of thing. Um so I, I, I didn't learn a lot girl, like of like actual kind of knowledge or stuff besides stuff I saw on TV or a magazine, stuff like that. Yeah. Um I just had, I had a few cousins with land and they let me use it and and they they all hunted too. So they had the tree stand set up in good spots already. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that that big of an issue. Um so I I I, I kind of asked around what, 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 what kind of caliber range it should be in and, and and what brands are good. And kind of picked it from there, kind of just on my own. Just walked in, picked one off the wall, and went from there. So I love it. Full send. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's been it's been solid the whole time. So that's neat. Now, when what, how old were you when you killed your first deer? Um, somewhere in my teens. I'm not sure where. Okay. Um, I I went a lot and watched growing up. But didn't really get to get start shooting on my own until I was t- t- about a teenager or so, okay. uh, at least with deer and stuff. Dove, dove. I think I started from around seven. Oh, wow. Um, here and there, but awesome. Was, no, nothing was really consistent with it, so it was kind of here or there. Yeah. With it, so. When did um when you killed your first deer? Like, did you learn to skin it? Did you get the blood all over you and all that? Like, what was that like? Oh yeah, no. I mean, it, yeah, you have to you have to skin it. You, you, you got to be a part of it if you did it, okay. kind of thing. So yeah, no, I had to be help with all of it. And after the first one, I I did it all myself. So really, and we process. Yeah, we process it all ourselves and everything. So wow. So do you have like a cooler or meat hanger? Like, how do you do that? Just hey, I mean, you, you hang the deer up and and let it sit for a couple of days if it's cold enough outside. Yeah. Um, if not, then you get, you can put it in, you know, a four foot cooler or three, whatever, how biggest cooler you got really. Um, and kind of let it soak for a couple of days and drain the water and stuff. Yep. And after that, you're just butchering it up and vacuum sealing it. So you know how to butcher a deer. Yeah. Teach me. Okay. That's so cool. So yeah. I showed up to the processor. <laughs> with my my first buck and um he was a little spike though but i showed up and i was like hey i really want to skin it nobody was there it was like the first year of the whole day and he was like it's like seriously like, yeah and like i had a ball and uh the guy that took me hunting brian with hunters hg gold actually on his property was like i don't know whether to be scared or if this is normal <laughs> but like i was it was cool to learn and i think that was really valuable and you got to do it early on in life which i think is so cool i've never actually cut up all the meat and stuff but i got to skin it and that was neat yeah Huh. Oh, yeah, my me and my, my 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 family just grew up doing all that stuff. I mean, we actually didn't have a lot of deer, you know, seventy years ago. Uh, like my like my grandparents, my grandfather never saw a deer growing up. I mean, the, the, there was a bad disease. I forget which one it it, it is now, um, but it wiped out all, all. I think all Tennessee's deer population for the most part. Yeah, and um, we have almost no turkey, no deer, no anything. Uh, when it comes to big game animals, for a while there, from a certain disease, and we had to bring in a, a genetic crossbreed from like seven different states that was resistant to everything. 
and make kind of like a super hybrid deer that would that, that would work here and now we're like top five in the country in deer and top three in turkey so we've done a really good job with our we got elk now um so we've done a really good job with conservation of it but yeah they were they weren't here but my old family they, they grew up you know hunting rabbits hunting squirrels hunting raccoons we they all had dogs for them and everything so it was they, 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 all, they all cleaned everything themselves it was just they were too poor to do anything else it was grow tobacco and do that so yeah yeah that's uh i grew up duck hunting i never got to go deer hunting till way later in life uh but that was neat like dipping them in the wax and pulling all the feathers and all that cool stuff and like you said it, you're too poor you just do what you gotta do <laughs> yeah exactly how how hard do you think it would be um because i know how hard do you think it would be if you were like a child that wanted to go hunting or you're someone that's listening to this you know an adult that want to learn that and you have no background right like your family didn't hunt you have no knowledge like where do you start um there can be a little bit of a curve to it mm-hmm. um it's it really depends on on your area um how's how's the public land mm-hmm. um public land kind of gets a bad rep a lot of the time when it, it really is actually legitimate you know hunting ground to use if you're if you use it right um some can be overused some can be you know just way too much and if they're kind of blown out but they they, they can be I, I see i've seen some big deer pulled out of public land oh. and i really have um and, and so that, that that's kind of a good place to start and, and of course with the internet now it kind of makes everything a little bit easier it does. uh you can learn a lot really quickly um most of the stuff i've learned about hunting has been internet wise honestly yeah um but but yeah it, it, it would be access to public land would be the biggest thing and not not really overthinking it really i mean uh, uh, especially in tennessee most of your shots aren't more than 100 yards yeah i mean if you have really good eyes you can iron sight that um okay. but you know, a, a, an okay scope and it, the, 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 that's got, it's got a good mount to it. It's not going to lose zero yep. and you're going to be good with the, with the right cal with the good caliber and stuff. Yeah. I mean, wherever you go for the most part, I mean, you're not having to do these crazy, you know, West coast, you know, you're doing mountain top to mountain top, you know, mm-hmm. three, the 2000 yard shot where you're really having to figure that math out. Uh, yeah we're, we're elk hunting and stuff up on mountains um and it's just not the same here we just don't have those shots at least yeah. middle tennessee wise you guess you get a little bit more over there with y'all with the mountains but yeah but pass that's that's not <laughs> pass i want to do um no. yeah the the cool thing too like how important you think that is for you austin to like pass down the information that you know of skinning a deer and quartering a deer and all of that to the next generation of people no, um, yeah, I, I think it's an important skill. I mean, it's one. It's it, it's just important to know how food works, like where it comes from. Like people have a very very disconnected, you know, kind of mindset on how food works and how most everything works, from electricity to food, yeah. and where it comes from, and kind of how the process works. So just just from that standpoint alone, it's just a cool thing for everybody to learn. Um, it's just good skills to have. It's just small stuff that it, you may never have to use it. You probably won't, but yeah, but you can still do it if you need to. You 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 have a mental understanding of it. You know, it's it, it's biology. It's it's it's, a, it's understanding how the bi- how the muscles are connected. It's 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 anatomy. It's 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 it's, it's, it's multiple things all wrapped up into one. Yeah, it, it's just. It, it's just, it's just something that's I I think very good for people to know and to have understanding of, like e- even if they really don't ever use it. So. Yeah, I mean I think what's going to happen is like generations from now they're not going to have a clue how to do anything. Maybe the internet, sure, but they're going to be like so used to whatever is given to them that they're not even going to think like oh I need to do that or want to do that, right? Oh yeah, but oh, it can easily is, happen. Yeah, that knowledge is so awesome. Um. So hopefully the people listening and like the people that do hunt, like pass that knowledge on, take a new hunter with you, um, teach them how to do the things. 
and make them do the things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, ask. I just tell people, this is what you're going to do. I'm like, you know, my friend, I said this before. I'm like, hey, if you're going fish with me, you're going to bait your own hook and you're going to take that fish off and put it back if you have to on your, by yourself or you can't go. <laughs> and these are adults. <laughs> like, right. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. No, I've had lots of adults that can't bait their own hooks. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Well, and if you do it, then you caught it, not them, because you baited the hook. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. So, group hunting. That's awesome. Now, your dad told me to ask you this because I don't have a clue or have any previous knowledge on this. Tell me about this gaming career that you had. And don't whip through it in five seconds like you did <laughs> earlier. But tell me about this career. I mean, it wasn't me. It was, it was so after I got burned, it was what am I doing next? It's, you know, after a little bit of time, it was, what am I doing next? And I was like, well, I guess the first thing I can do is at least figure out how to play video games again. Mm-hmm. It's like, how, however that looks, however that, that turns out. And I started off with a game where it's just kind of using a mouse, you know, you're just kind of clicking and pointing and it's, it's only like three or four buttons. So there's not much to it. Um, start with that on a laptop in the hospital. Um, was was kind of evolving it um as like as like as like i kind of could throughout the whole thing Mm -hmm. but with that first game i was streaming it and stuff and had a pretty good following and and i just ended up timing it up just right where me getting out of the hospital was right when their competitive ladder reset Mm -hmm. so it's like one like level one to a hundred and it's kind of a race kind of deal Mm-hmm. And so I le- I I led through that ladder for that whole thing, um, getting up to about the max level. And the last kind of quarter of it, I ended up having to go back to the hospital, and I ended up kind of falling behind. So I so I ended up not actually winning it, um, but yeah, I, but I ended up growing a pretty good following on Twitch with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I had about thirty people, um, or I have an average about thirty or so viewers. At the time, I think, give or take. So I just kind of kept evolving how I could play and kind of testing out what games I could play. And I ended up getting like a 3D foot pad for like like VR gaming and figured that out. So I could get my movement on with just my feet. And then I I kind of figured out what I could do with my mouse and stuff. So I use a MO mouse, which is got about 27 buttons on it total. Okay. And I can kind of preset those in whatever kind of way I want and kind of set those up with whatever I want to do with it. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of figured that out and kind of gained a little more movement in my left hand where I could use kind of those two fingers that I have if I want to on the keyboard. Um, but, but just kind of kept experimenting with games. And as I kind of figured out the setup and kind of healed more, uh, I started streaming with the camera on on those parts of it, so you could see the the foot pad and stuff, and was just playing different games as I was figuring them out. And that was kind of my my gaming career, and I kind of did that for a while until I kind of figured the IDPA stuff out, and I kind of jumped into that really hard. So, what was your following though that you got to on Twitch? Um. I mean, I, I think it kind of fluctuated between 30 and 40 was kind of my max. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was just nothing ever crazy or anything like that. I mean, I might have had once or twice where it was in the, like, I had 100 or so. Mm-hmm. But those were kind of hosted kind of spikes from other people and stuff and different reasons it was going on like that. Okay. Um, but it's, it, 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 the, the, the way the stats work work with Twitch to even have a viewer put you in like the top like 10 percent mm-hmm. or something like that like it's just it's, it's a really really skewed viewer versus viewing because there's so, there so many people trying to do it right um so so it's kind of the, the scales are kind of way off on it so to even have viewers at all is is, is a huge thing it, it with any consistency so it was it was really cool that time definitely and it gave me just something to do so like keep my mind off everything early on well when i couldn't physically really do much yeah so, so it worked out really well were you a gamer before you got burned oh yeah no i it was it was go to the gym you know you get up in the morning play video games eat breakfast go to the gym 
to come back and play video games until, until we had to go to wrestling practice that afternoon. And that, that was kind of a cycle of, of your day during like the summer and, and winter breaks and stuff. Um, so, no, we, we, we definitely lived on the computer most of the time. Did you so. like compete in like competitive gaming? A little bit here and there. Um, we were kind of, I was, it, it was, it was I'm, I'm, I'm kind of right there on the edge where it kind of was much more popular and easy to do than, than it was more of a early internet days where you had to go to the right websites and like we'd have to pull a ref into like a private game mm-hmm. and like it was all like manually reported back in to like to like do tournaments for certain games to where it was kind of hard to get into it if you didn't know how to do it. Right. Um to where it is now, to where there's almost preset stuff for everything. There's game every every game's got 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 your rankings already preset in there. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. So it's it it, it was definitely different, and I got to kind of go through that transition. So there wasn't a lot of it when I was when I was playing more hardcore. I guess mm-hmm. um, it was harder to do. So I I didn't have as much exposure as if if I was a little bit younger. Yeah. And kind of went through it at a different age than I did. I feel so. like that's even in the shooting sports, like junior shooters, like just get so much better so fast and have those opportunities very quickly, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, post gaming, that's interesting too. Like you kind of like not a guinea pig, but like you did test out these products to make it possible for you to game again. Like that's Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, 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 the, and like the, the, the foot pad stuff, like I, I got to test out a prototype for them whenever they were kind of evolving the way it worked. Like, cause it was just a, just a foot pad for, at first and they put a base plate mm-hmm. so it doesn't slide around as much. So I got to, I got to test that out. So I, I got it before everybody else and got the prototype version of it. Cool. So I, I, I've, I've gotten several different things like that where they, they want this one of my input hmm. and like, and like, I'm just signed up for, it's kind of, this, it's, it's pretty casual to where it's like, you're making a game video game and you want you want to have controls set up to where it's disabled friendly mm-hmm. or something like that or they just want to see how disabled friendly their game is in general yeah then they can sign their game up for this with this with this company and this website and they'll they'll, they'll contact us with whatever matches up with with our disabilities mm-hmm. and what they're looking to find out and I, I'll basically, it's like a beta tester almost in like a very specific way. Yeah. Um, so, so I help out with that. Anything else that I can find help out with, I usually do. Um, but yeah, I've got to, I've got to test some different gear stuff out. That's been cool. Yeah. Um, and just, it, yeah, it's been fun. Much as that it can is, be. Yeah. That, okay. The, the beta testing blows my mind. I think that's amazing. Like you said, matching like what these, people need back you think about like even ada like websites and stuff like having beta testers is huge from that actual market. So like the the fact that these companies are listening to you is is like a big deal oh yeah, yeah. Huh. what's been like the coolest thing that you've tested can you share um most of it's been macro like movement stuff um, so they've all been kind of relatively in the same kind of category. Mm-hmm. Um, like I had one that would attach my foot that I could do directions with. Um, I have one attached right here on your on your head on your um, headset. You kind of move your head one way or the other. It's supposed to activate things. Um, the, it's been a lot of stuff like that, um, and those have probably been kind of kind of the cooler ones of them. Um, but lots of RAM stuff, the game, the, the, just, just helping out with the game stuff has been really cool. Just to be able to help out with that. Um, oh, but. okay. Okay. So IDPA. All right. So now we've got gaming Now we're into the shooting. You told me before uh, offline that you dabbled a, a smidge in USPSA. So how did you get there? So which one taught to USPSA or? Yeah. Um, to USPSA. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I enjoy it. I, uh, I, I have nothing against it or anything. It's just, just, it's more about convenience of being able to go to them. Yeah. It's really, really why I don't go to more of them. Um, I, 
but we have all, all of ours are on the weekends here yes. and they're all outdoors. So it's like, I've got kind of a window time frame that I can do outdoors still. I'm still, my body's still acclimating to being outside whenever the weather is kind of extreme. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's still kind of, it can be a struggle. Um, so th- th- that's kind of limited me and they're, they're, they're all on the weekends, which I'm usually, you know, working, yep. doing, I'm usually um, on the range on the weekends. So it just hasn't been something that I could time up well since I started working and stuff. Yeah. So. But you shot but, two matches. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you shot carry optics, I'm assuming. Yeah. What was different about that that you did like, or what was something like you didn't like compared to, to IDPA? Um, I, I, I enjoyed the, the, the kind of free form of it and kind of free flow with, 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 within these parameters, you kind of do whatever you want to do, um, a little more so than IDPA. Um, and it has a little more distance to it, which adds, it just adds different stuff. And because it's outside, there's a lot more, um, metal stuff that just, we, I don't encounter with the clubs that I'm at. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure there's more around and at that, the other IDPA clubs and stuff, it's just, I don't get, get to experience it as much in our area. Um, unless I'm at a USPSA match. So it's not, they're, they're kind of associated in my head when they probably shouldn't be <laughs> as much. Um, but, uh, my, my dislikes, uh, and dislike would probably be the wrong word, even yeah. if it is dislike. Um, but, it, but 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 it's almost like 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 you could almost take both of them, and I, I could pick like a couple of rules from each and pull them out and put them together. <laughs> yeah. And, and then they'd be and I and they'd be great in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just small rule stuff. I mean, it's like I can't have a magwell and carry optic in USPSA, but I can in IEPA, it's like yeah yep or like you could uh, appendix draw in USPSA way before you could in IDPA. yeah which 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 I guess I get a little bit people are people are fighting that in IDPA right now for and it hasn't even started yet so yeah there's already clubs already trying to say that they're not going to run it they're not going to allow it because people change. don't people don't want to change. And no. there's certain demographics that <laughs> that's coming from. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but it's just like, uh, open gets a little crazy for yeah. me with, with the, with the guns and stuff. So, so, so that it, 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 that, that's been more my hold off is it's, I, I, I kind of like it being more simplified with the guns and everything sure. a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, the open guns are super awesome and they're super cool. Yeah. Um, but it's, there's just something about it that, that I like it being a more realistic yeah. kind of thing with ID, like IDPA is at least on the rule sets with the, with the guns and everything. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and even the belts and the gear set up, uh, it, it, there's something about, about the round counts being lower mm-hmm. and, and you're, you're kind of still doing the same thing because the round counts are, you're still doing the same amount of reloading that you would in both. Yeah. Um, you're just shooting less and a di- or you're shooting a different way. Um, but yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean it's, there's nothing major about USPSA that, that that I can say I dislike. Yeah. It's just it's just small rules that I prefer from one from the other. That I'm gonna because that, that's the only thing you have to compare it to. So yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Um I think it's neat that you tried different sports too and it's there's something for everyone. I think that's the other power too that's out there is like you like what you like, what you should, and I like what I like just three again, but most people don't. Uh-uh. <laughs> um, no, it's awesome. Uh, okay. So I want to go into the section with the carry stuff. So you said you weren't, or you were the person that got your permanent 21. It was not. Okay. So I was, so I'm curious on your stuff. So what made you like want to sign up to go get your permit? I mean, it was something that I always wanted to do. It was just never kind of, in the priority. foreground enough yeah priority yeah, yeah definitely yeah which wasn't a priority yeah it wasn't something that like i needed to do right away or was worried about mm-hmm. um and i guess I, I, and plus coming from a wrestler background 
I had the confidence to defend myself a little bit more than most, yep. um, and, and all that. So, so, so that was all. That also kind of put it less and less in the foreground. Um, and so, after getting burned, the, that became part of the factor. Was I can't really control things as much as I could beforehand. I can't do do what I used to and take care of what I need to if I need to. Um, and something that about that that I have always enjoyed doing was was you know just shooting for fun, yeah. Um, shooting in the backyard, planking in targets and stuff, and it just was something that I just hadn't focused on in a while. I was just, I was just doing stuff. Yep. And it just it just been you know you gra- you graduate and you, I did all that stuff and deer hunted for a while, and then early twenties things just kind of you know you, you just kind of get focused on other stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it just became a time where, where, where it kind of all just kind of synced up. It was, and I decided it was probably a good idea to, to at least try it out and see if I could. Yeah. Um, and so we, 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 we took a new shooters class, me and Allie did, uh, beforehand and then took to the, to the class and yeah. Most people don't do that. Um, I think that was really valuable that you just shared that is taking just a new shooter intro to firearms class. Because oh, yeah. that there is value, of course, I would like encourage people to go take a concealed carry class, but you're not going to learn how to shoot firearms concealed carry. You should be dry firing or practicing live firing and drawing from concealment. And there's aspects that you need to back up and do the basics. Right. So yeah. that's. Really- uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, your, your carry class is more of, is more of a classroom class. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's not about teaching you how to do anything. No. And so it's, it's, it's a little more legal, but not at the same time. It's, it's, it's a lot of little, little bit of nothing kind of things shoved together that you really have to individually break down afterwards to really understand any of it with any depth Yeah. or so. Yeah. So you two took the the beginner class and y'all took the Tennessee enhanced handgun carry permit class together, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. How how boring was that? (laughs) I mean, I, I, I enjoy it, yeah. so it's, it's entertaining for me. Um, I'm sure she was a little bit more bored through the first bit of it until we got on the range. Yeah. Um, but I did get bored with, with the with the shoot five, load five. Yes. To get to the target. So, so I missed a couple because I just got bored. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, it, but no, it was good. It was fun. I mean, I scored a 90-something. I mean, it's... I I had a guy at the range. I guess that was Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it was Sunday. And he was like, "Hey, I'm coming back, back, back here to take y'all's carry class next Saturday." And I was like, "Cool." He was like, "Yeah, I'm just wondering." He's like, "Well, will I be okay with like how how this target looks?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he was like, "Well, he's like, I just as I guess like I just didn't know. I was really worried about it." He's like, I got the gun in like February, and I probably put like four thousand rounds through the gun. Wow! I'm like, I'm like, dude, you're you're like light years ahead of what most people are doing. Like, you're perfectly fine. I mean, he he, he was like, like shooting just a head silhouette of a target, so it was probably a four inch, five inch circle. That's awesome. I mean, I mean yeah, that's what his grouping was with with the, with, with probably a hundred bullets or so. Yeah. So, I mean, I, so so I went and got him the actual silhouette. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the actual t- actual class yeah yeah what what what, uh, what whichever one it is <laughs> and i was like here dude I'm like just shoot it just i'm telling you just kid just you, you're gonna be fine like you don't need to worry about this like seriously <laughs> like you don't need much you, you, just, you just gotta be able to hold the gun right like <laughs> for real and your mouth right now uh right, right. <laughs> it, it's so fascinating that you just said like four thousand rounds right i wish we knew the statistics like the basic firearm owner, even that takes a class or gets a permit, like how many rounds do you, a, a lifetime, it's definitely not 4,000. <laughs> do they no. shoot? No, but most, not at all. I mean, but, but, but most cops don't shoot them that, that much in a couple of years. No, no, that's disappointing in, in and of its own. But yeah, I think that's, those are the people that I like training and talking to and meeting the ones that are putting in the work and even saying like, Hey, this is not enough. And it's, they get that though. Like pistol skills are super perishable. <laughs> Oh yeah, very quickly. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I had my last my last big surgery back um back in September. I was out for a month, and that first that first match back, and I was like, 
I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I and I ran actually pretty 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 well and did fine and it wasn't bad at all. But but it it felt rough as as could be. Yep. Those for those first couple of shots I did. So no, it definitely you feel rusty quick. Yep. So, so I shoot nationals. I leave tomorrow for uh, low cap nationals, and I have not dry fired a um, pistol with like magazines and reloading and all of that in like a year. Like I'm not exaggerating. So. <laughs> So for me, I was like, why am I looking at my magazines? Why am I not looking here? Why am I training a gun that much? Why did I miss that? Like, it's bad. I was like, oh, this is going to go really bad (laughs) very quickly. But it's so true. Like, I haven't done the work in so long. I'm like, this is really bad. I have to go back. Yeah, but yeah, but you'd be surprised at how quick it comes back, though. Luckily, it's yeah. it's one of those things that you feel it, especially under that those first few, yeah, you know, shots or first few just rounds of practice or whatever you're doing. But but it it gets there. You get back in the groove pretty well, pretty well. At least at least I have for my surgeries and stuff so far. Um, so it it's it thankfully isn't isn't that big of a deal. But no, it definitely you feel at least you feel like it though, that, that that first little bit. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, I was like, I don't know if I want to shoot tonight. I was like, I don't know about this. I think I might need another another two weeks. Like, <laughs> yep. What excuse can I make up here? <laughs> yep, oh, this is not gonna go well. I'm just I'm there to have fun at this point. That's good enough for me. But I was like, holy yeah. cow! <laughs> yeah. So. Um. So I, I'm curious because I, I don't know you as well as I want to yet. So what is your big dream in life? What is, what is your goal? What do you want to do? I don't really know. Okay. Honestly, it's not nothing I've really figured out yet. Okay. That's fair enough. I, I like that you've had different like career paths too. I mean, gaming, shooting, and like hunting was part of it. Just there's a lot of opportunity there that you have. Um, yeah. It's neat. Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to be pretty open and try stuff out as much as I can. Uh, any chance I can get to learn stuff, I usually do. If I if I, if I can, whether it's you know it's a trade skill or something like that. Um, I've done everything from carpentry work to work for an oil company in Louisiana for a little while. Uh, wow. Um, managed tractor supply. It was my last job before I actually got burned. Um, Did you get to play with the little baby chickens? I did. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not allowed Changed. to go into rural king or tractor supply because I will take them home <laughs> with no plan. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> no. Uh when I was, I don't know, some sort of teenager, I just came home with a chicken. My dad was like, What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I I think I tried to get some mallard ducks there for a little while. And- I was like, I can just put like a little baby pool like outside of like the balcony like like thing right there. It's fine. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Mom was like, um, no, no, <laughs> no, it's not gonna I, work. I got some sugar gliders later on, but oh. ducks didn't work out. So funny. Oh, we digressed again. But okay, going back to <laughs> to um, so I want to ask you about that. What uh, gun do you carry every day, and like, how do you carry? Um. So I've, I've been carrying a VP9 mm-hmm. pretty much this whole time. But that's also what I wish I with at the match. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got a staccato P. Nice. Uh, so I've been, I, I've been carrying that a little bit more. It's kind of more of a winter gun, especially with mine. It's, it's got, it's got a threaded barrel. It's comped. And so oh. it's a little, it's, it's basically an XC in length. Um, so it's about a five inch barrel. So it's a little bit longer. Um, but but it's it's been a VP nine pretty much the whole time up until now. Right. Um, but I, I carry appendix. Um, it's been mostly a Vetter light tuck. I think okay. is the holster. So I I I I, I like the Kydex to be as minimalistic as possible. I I want I want single clip, mm-hmm. and I, know I want it to be like a sturdy single clip and just almost as nothing as possible. And, and then I get a clinger pad, which is just another company's pad that you just put on the back. Okay. Um, yep. And it just adds a little patty between my burns mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really does kind of just take any, any, any kind of pressure point from the gun yep. away. So with appendix carry, it's really convenient. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love appendix carry, but it digs. And I had just did some sticky like foam. Yeah. And yeah. On the backing. 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's basically a pad that runs the whole back of it, so it's it's really convenient. And I'll get like no swipe guard, so if my gun's drawn and I bend over, it's basically like the holster's gone. Yeah. Um. So it's convenient for that. Um. But for for you, I have a question. Like, do you train just to draw and shoot one handed? Oh, um, I mean, I I, I practice it. Yeah. Um. So it's okay. It's, I actually keep my knife at a certain spot mm-hmm. to where I can, I can, I can kind of loop it over onto over the knife. That kind of clears the gun a little bit more than just using the gun as kind of the hook spot yeah. for the shirt. So I can do that. Um, so I do practice it a little bit. Okay. Um, but it is kind of situational. It's, 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 it's usually, um, depending on how it's set up, if it's, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll either pre grab or I or I use my left hand yeah. to lift it most of the time. I, I I try and just do it the way it's supposed to be done. Cool. Um, yeah, and just kind of work with it. Uh, awesome. It misses sometimes, but it's I've I've gotten it down pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. So. Well, Austin, what's next for you? I'm just trying. I'm probably trying to keep doing what I'm doing. Trying to get better at it. Um. Hopefully it's the same thing, just better at it. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, that's kind of all I got going on well, right now. You're doing more than most, and every day we get yeah. a little bit better. And like you're actually training and putting in the work and teaching. Actually, like I don't know, if you get this feeling like when I teach, I almost I learn myself too, and students teach me a lot as well. So. Oh yeah. No, it's it. The 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 old the old ultimate people people that in any sport, the ones that can teach it well. Yep. Like if they, but if you can do both, then, then you kind of mastered it. It's 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 really hard to be a good. It's 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 hard to be a good sports player, individual, whatever athlete, whatever you want to call it. It's hard to it's hard to be a good athlete and a good teacher. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's it. No, it's it's it's. It's been it's been it's been a big big part of it teaching and just like I said, new shooters are my favorite. Yep. because because it's, it's 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 like dealing with little kids it's like the stuff they, they, they they'll make connections with you've never even looked at it that way mm-hmm. and so it kind of gives you that perspective even though they're wrong it just makes you rethink it and so it gives you the perspective and then it, like it ta- you, your mind starts tangenting off to things that you can teach later on and it just changes something else in, in the way you teach because of that okay. so it's rich it's just fun it's something that's, that's kind of constantly evolving or at least it should be, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and so it's just kind of a never-ending thing. So it's That's been great. fun. That's awesome. I'm really proud of you. I mean, I'm glad I met you and your your wife and your dad. Your dad's really good. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, they had a lot of fun hanging out with you. Oh, that was a good time. Um, I'm never gonna forget the pickles. Like that was just, I don't know, serendipity. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was awesome. Well. Any final thoughts that you want to leave listeners with, whether it's Second Amendment stuff, caring, taking a class, like any final words of wisdom or advice you want to leave people with? No, I mean, I definitely encourage everybody to take a class. I mean, you shouldn't be, if you're caring, you should be practicing. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're caring, you should be taking classes here and there. It's just, it's just a skill that, it's, it's always be better if, if you're if you're if you're training more. It's never you're never gonna be a disadvantage yep. by taking more classes. It's just it's always gonna be helpful. It's always be better. Uh, you're already behind the power curve with it already as a law bias based citizen. So you you have to kind of take all of the advantage that you can get. Yep. So that's well said, my friend. Well said. So if people want to find you on social media, you want to drop. Or tell us what your Facebook or Instagram is. Um, I, I believe you can find me on Facebook. I have a page for my shooting stuff in general. That's just Austin Cox, um, disabled, uh, competitive, competitive shooter and instructor, I believe is what it is. Um, that's all I have out right now for anything outside of that. Um, I just haven't really set up my social media stuff yet. Okay. Um, unfortunately so that's that's kind of down the road here i guess no that's awesome but, yeah cool uh, well thank you so much for joining and sharing your story um 
And hopefully we can change some things, I think, in the sports and just make it a little bit easier, even if it's not like a category that's very comparable. Um, but I definitely think that that gets exhausting, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's been all right so far, but I haven't done much outside of my local area that knows me. Yeah. So, but just in general, I think that would help the next person too, you know. But, no, I, but I definitely agree that that needs to be at least looked at or at least consider. consider. Yeah, yeah. At least put, put put up and at least talked about a little bit. Yeah. Because I love seeing it. Um, that's now four people that I know that's out there doing stuff that I'm sure people know more. Um, so oh, very, sure. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you again. And yeah, um, no, of course. Thank you. Can't wait to shoot again. Hopefully, um, <laughs> I can do better at IDPA next time. <laughs> You you say gray, it's fine. Maybe I'll do a pistol. It's uh, way less to think about. <laughs> oh, man. All right, listeners, tune in for next week's all new episode of the Reddit Club podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Uh, and be sure to subscribe to the Reddit Club podcast wherever you listen and stream podcasts. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Reddit Club podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Follow along on social media at Reticle Up or 3 Gen Kenzie.